Booney52, how are you folks? Just had to get out and share a couple things with you, but first I needed to share this. This is not beautiful. No diving, no swimming. I have leather on. Winter gloves. I think I'm safe. There's the king. You know, this is the first time I've been out for a while. Haven't had a lot of videos out. If you follow my channel, you know that my bride, Mrs. Bodine, comes along with me every now and then. Unfortunately, she had a pretty serious injury that required some surgery. And it scared the hell out of me. Is it wrong? that I see a path that I know is for hiking. I just wonder if it's really a deer run. <laughs> hey folks, hey, um, thanks for tuning in on this beautiful day. Late fall in Michigan, you don't get many of these days to ride anymore. And thought I'd come out and share uh, what's been going on in the Bodine 52 world. If you happen to um, follow my channel and know my wife, Mrs. Bodine, uh, or it's the first time checking in on the channel, hopefully it'll uh, hit home a little bit. So, some of you know that I communicate with a lot, and uh, a couple close friends that Mrs. Bodine had um, an accident, an incident, um, a week or so ago, depending on when you see this, and. I'll just tell it to you real briefly um, so I can clue you in on how she is doing. Uh, so we, Mrs. Bodine is a fireplace fanatic. She loves wood-burning fireplaces. So early in the summer, I bought a half a quart of wood and put it in my backyard, kind of underneath my deck to dry it out. And a couple times we've been able to burn so far this year, you know, kind of had to go down and get it and... A lot of bikes out today. Um, go down, you know, I probably 12, 14 stairs down my deck to the to the backyard. So we talked about moving at least some of it so I could get even more because she'll burn like five cords if I buy them. Um, to a little place in the garage, well, not ideal. Uh, easy to kind of go get. Nobody had to go outside. She wouldn't hurt herself carrying wood, all that fun stuff. So... Got home from work late and said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be outside for a little while." And um, so I drove the truck into the backyard, backed up underneath the deck, and I started loading some of the wood to drive back up the hill to my garage to unload it. So I was doing that, and Mrs. Bodine must have uh, looked out the back window and saw me, and she came out with gloves on, and says, "Let me help." I'm like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And she's like, no, no, I'll help you. So we threw a bunch of wood in the truck. We thought it was gonna, we thought it was enough, actually, just to take up. And she walked kind of up around, the, it's up a hill to the garage to, um, to wait for me to pull the truck around. I pulled the truck up in the driveway and um, unloaded a lot, of, uh, a lot of that wood. And then some of the wood was kind of in the back of the cab. So she said, hey, let me hop up in the cab, and I'll just push it forward while you're loading it. I'm like, okay, cool. Be careful getting up there, right? So uh, she did that. So she's in the back of my open cab to pick up at this point, because I have the top rolled back. And um, I'm done. I said, she's, I said, do you think we should get some more from down under the deck? And she's like, yeah, let's do that. I'm like, okay, you got to walk down? And she goes, no, 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 I'm going to ride in the back of the truck. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, no, I'm going to ride back in the truck. I used to do this as a kid, blah, blah, blah. No big deal. I'm like, all right, well, at least make sure you're sitting down. So she's sitting down, and I drive to the backyard. No problems, right? Kind of got to go down a hill. And um, that guy's got no helmet on, and it's cold, i got to tell you. Um... And so she's in the back of the truck, and I back up to the deck, and I said, hey. She's like, all right, I'm going to get down. And she's getting ready to kind of jump down. I got the tailgate down at this point. Um, 
She's gonna. She said, "Let me. I'll just jump down." I'm like, "Nah, you know that may hurt your back. Why don't you scooch down?" And she says, "Yeah, that's a good idea." So she kind of sits on her butt, and she's on the edge of the tailgate. Now I'm in my backyard. There's a pile of wood stacked, you know, about two feet away. And um, she scooches her butt to the edge, and uh, of course I turn around to start grabbing some wood. And, and she went to slide off, and you know when you're putting your foot down and you think it's, like, next to the ground so you know it's going to land? Well, that wasn't the case. It was more like missing a step. So, uh, needless to say, she slid off the back and fell to the ground. Uh, I was right close to her. I turned around, and her first comment uh, was I broke my hip and she was pretty frantic and I just kind of laid down in the grass and talked to her said you know how you feeling where's it at blah 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 and I'm like look don't freak out I'm gonna call 911 so I call 911 and um, you know my son happened to be visiting so I, after I talked to her for five minutes and I called 911 I, I called him I said meet me on the deck he came out and I said, hey, look, mom just fell. I called 911. Can you go out in the front and get the ambulance people back to the back of the house? He says, yes, yes. Is she okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's okay. She's not okay, really. And um, sure enough, ambulance comes. They load her up. And, and you know, she's just the nicest person in the world. And, and she's laying there hurt. And her comment was, I'm so sorry. You know, I know I hurt myself bad. You know, how are we going to give meds to the cat? I know you got to work. I, I mean, just flat out thinking about everybody other than herself. So they take her to a local hospital. And um, I go and get some clothes for her. I show up in the ER and... And she's hurting, there's no doubt. She is, uh, she's in some pain. They're starting to give her some meds. and um, The doctor ends up coming in, and they end up doing an x-ray. And he says, hey, she's wiggling her toes. You know, I don't think she broke her hip. She may have just bruised her leg. And I'm like, oh, my God, that would be perfect if it was just that. And she also hurt her hand and her elbow, which, you know, it's natural to put your hands down. Um same thing on a motorcycle, by the way. That's why I have these gloves on. And um, But we're going to do the x-ray. So, um, you know, all that stuff in emergency rooms takes a couple hours. It's happening about 5 o'clock. So, you know, it's like 7 o'clock. They do the x-ray, which was excruciating pain for her uh, to, you know, to get this x-ray and move from table to table. And um, she, uh, you know, they finally come in and said, hey, look. We're going to, probably too much information, but we're going to put a catheter in you. And I said, okay, hey, why don't I leave the room for this? Because I'm a guy, and I'm squeamish. And uh, I'm standing outside, and the doctor comes up to me and says, um, I was just getting ready to come in. I said, well, they're putting the catheter in her. And he says, okay. He goes, well, I need to make a phone call to a surgeon. I'm like, excuse me? And he says, she broke her femur. I'm like, she broke her leg. He's like, well, kinda. I said, what do you mean, kinda? And he said, she broke the sleeve at the top of the femur that goes into her hip. And I am like, oh my God. And he is like, she's getting surgery tonight or tomorrow morning. There are no options. Okay. He's like, you want to tell her or you want me to tell her? Because I'm calling an orthopedic surgeon right now. I'm like, I'll tell her. So they finish up what they're doing. I go in and tell her. And she's obviously upset. Still thinking about everybody else but herself, of course. And, um, you know, we end up we end up getting upstairs and getting checked in a room and all that stuff. And communicating with the kids and, and uh, all that stuff. And... You know, the doctor basically come in and told us what had happened. The surgeon came in and told us 
you know, hey, what do you know? I'm like, not much other than she broke her leg type deal. And uh, and I, I think the emergency room doc did not tell us it was uh, it was going to, where it went into her hip. So he basically did a little drawing for me and just said, hey, this is where it's broke. We have to give her a full hip replacement. Now, Mrs. Bodine is 56 years old, has no arthritis, nothing in her hips. As a matter of fact, the surgeon said 90 pe- 90% of the people that get hip surgery from me are much older than you. And they love me because they've been in so much pain that I fix them up and they're better. Well, not the case for her because <laughs> she had perfectly good hip. And... Um, so, make a long story even longer, she had surgery It's just about a week ago. Actually, it was a week ago today. Not sure when this video will be out, but she is home and resting. Uh, my daughter, who is uh, a month away from finishing her uh, nursing degree, came into town from Chicago and has really been um, supportive in helping get her situated and, and with her dressing and basically telling her dad what to do. and. She went back three or four days ago, and it's been me and Mrs. Bodine. And and uh, if you have hip surgery, you are you are going to have to have somebody with you. It's just flat out that way. And um, you know, today was a big day. Therapy came in, and she can now uh, get off the walker. And now she's trying to hobble around in a cane one week after surgery, which is amazing, according to them. So she's doing well, but she has a long road of recovery. And um, I'm just proud of her. She just did an amazing job so far. Good spirits. And, and you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it, it honestly took me a couple days because I felt this was my fault. Shouldn't let her up there. Shouldn't have made sure she was down. Right? And, of course, it's a freak accident. But it's still one of those things that Kind of makes you think about what's important to you. Makes you think as you're getting a little older, maybe there's some things you probably shouldn't do as much. you got to be a little more careful. But um, really, I think really when it hit me is when they took her out for an x-ray. Because they had to take her shoe off. So she had one shoe on when she went in. I had the other shoe at the house. Actually, I brought it over. Was when they took her out for the x-ray, her shoe was in the middle of the floor in the emergency room. I'm going to show you a picture of her right here. And, you know, you kind of go, okay, it's hip surgery. It's not going to kill her. But, you know, her sister passed away in her mid-40s with diabetes. And you just never know. And it's one of those things that kind of hit you. And I don't know. It's uh, I've always appreciated it and loved her death. And, and uh, we continue to support her work on being the best husband in the world. And just wanted to share with you guys. Thanks, everybody. Hug your loved one. Check in a friend. And um, we'll be back soon. Bye-bye.